Hi guys, uh, this is the Highway Podcast and uh, here's your host Bob again and today I've got a really good guest and uh, me and him go back a long, 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 long way. Um, I've known him probably for over 30 years, it's got to be. Um, his name's Lucky Madaha. If you haven't heard of him, I want to know why. He's probably the best Escrimador in the country. Well, well, he wouldn't agree to that. Hiya, Lucky. How are you doing, mate? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Hi, everyone, yeah. Oh, thanks, for, thanks for coming on, Lucky. Um, yeah. So, um, how long have we known each other? We've, it's been, yeah. it's got to be 30 years. Yeah, 30, well, yeah, coming up to 30 or so, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. and I remember you when you had hair, yeah? So, okay. <laughs> it was a long time ago. Not yeah. a lot of hair. No, yeah. neither of us had a lot of hair. Yeah, it, was, um, it started to go a little bit, but you know. yeah, yeah, it's not starting to grow, is it? <laughs> no, oh well, <laughs> you wish. Yeah, we <laughs> all wish. in the wrong places, yes. Yeah, all in the wrong places. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're right. Yeah, that's absolutely true. So, mm -hmm. um, what I'm going to do, and we always do this on the podcast, particularly yeah. with martial artists, particularly somebody your calibre, we always go mm -hmm. back to. Um, you know why you got into it you know when did it all start and why did you get into it okay uh well okay well going back uh, to the beginning um uh, i had come um, back uh, from india after living there for three years and uh, that was 1972 october and then um obviously went to school there uh, in in south uh, kent and uh, then uh that that's that's where my very first judo lesson was at school, you know. Because oh, right, okay. In normal, yeah, in the normal PE sessions, uh, once a week or so, they used to have a, a judo instructor come in and teach us judo. And, what a brilliant school! <laughs> yeah, and uh, uh, so yeah, that, that's that was my very first uh, uh, session there. Uh, so that would be in the um, end of uh, seventy two just as I had come back from India, you know, and mm -hmm. because, uh, but then the thing was, uh, I did a, uh, I was only in the school for about, well, from about October to December, when, you know, Christmas break, because then yeah. we moved again. Oh. From, from there, you know, from uh, uh, Erith, Kent. Yeah. Barking, Essex. Right, so you're an Essex boy. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> an Essex yeah. boy from India. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'd uh, been going back and forth because my uh, 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 parts of our family lived there, like you know, cousins. And so we moved into their house, uh, renting the, the two rooms or something of them. And uh, there, they almost got into judo there again, but because uh, my cousin wanted to do judo, but he never actually started it. It was all talk. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, but we all talked about it. But then before I was aware of uh, uh, the older karate chop, breaking brick, and uh, uh, a black belt, uh, had an idea what a black belt was, even before I even did the judo in uh, Kent. Right. Because of the Avengers, you know, the older, uh, I don't know, not, not new superhero Avengers, the old ones with Diana Rigg. Yeah, yeah, the, 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 yeah, the Avengers. Looked. Yeah, I'm an, I'm yeah, not... yeah, yeah, that's right. With um, yeah. Patrick, uh, was it um, John Steed? Uh, that's it. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and the woman in there, uh, the girl was uh, Diana Rigg. Yeah. She threw all the karate chops. You know, she's meant to be some sort of a cat, uh, sorry, cat uh, type of a. That's karate. right, she had a, I remember, I remember, because I'm about two years older than you. Yeah. So I remember her, like, as a young 16 year old man, you know, and everybody's like, wow. Yeah. You know, she's in a black skin tight. So if you yeah. younger guys watching have never yeah. seen the Avengers, the old Avengers, the original Avengers, yeah. the Diana Rigg was dark haired with a black like cat suit on type of thing. And yeah. she was dropping everybody on the neck. Yeah. yeah. And uh, some of it's quite violent actually when you look back, back on them. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, apparently I'd read a little bit more into it that it made her the first uh, female to demonstrate martial arts in the world basically I oh right that i think that would be right actually yeah yeah and uh, yeah anyway so uh from there you know uh breaking a, uh, a brick with a karate chop or something you know and the black belt had some sort of a superhero type of powers and um 
so uh, at the age I was uh, what, about less than 10. So I was aware of it, but I didn't know anything more than that. And uh, there was, uh, when I came back from India, then there was uh, this um, judo guy come in wearing a black belt. Well, okay, just do what he says. And uh, so then when we came uh, from Barking, I was only in Barking for about four months, you know, yeah. school uh, there as well. And uh, came to Coventry. And uh, as soon as we got settled, um, then my, uh, well, at that time, David Caradino, the Kung Fu TV series had started, you know, on TV. Um, yeah, I remember the Kung Fu series with Master yeah. Paul and Grasshopper. Yeah. And me and yeah. Simon Bly were talking about this because Simon Bly got into karate because yeah. of David Carradine. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I mean, I remember the first couple of times uh, as he used to come on, you know, the guys with bold heads, candles and all this. You know, uh, Tom, I didn't know anything about it, obviously. Like, and they used to, you know, what's this? Like, they used to flip the other side on. And then one time uh, I saw a bit of them fighting. And I thought, okay, maybe this is uh, something I should watch. Yeah. Uh, then uh, about, uh, I don't know, six months later, or so, I think the year would be about either end of 73, around about there. Because uh, we, we, we had come into Coventry and settled down, you know, my dad had bought, a, bought the house eventually, you know, uh, where we settled, we ended up settling down here. So in the first year, I moved to about th uh, three schools. Right. And uh, yeah, and uh, so as soon as we got settled down, then uh, he, well, the routine for the older guy, well, uh, the previous generation, my father's uh, age, they would go to work and straight into the pub, basically, you know, watch the news and then, and then to the pub. And then uh, uh, he had come in and we watched, uh, we were watching Kung Fu and he had just walked in at the moment of uh, when uh, David Caradine was about, about to kick off uh, with some cowboys. And then uh, he watched and he, uh, oh, here's some uh, uh, cowboys uh, getting beaten up by an unarmed, unarmed person without a gun, like, well, obviously, with a, you know, without a gun. And uh, so, as uh, we were uh, sitting down eating, and he goes, uh, is there anybody that teaches this here? You know, I said, well, yeah, there's a judo club at my school. My friend goes to it. And um, so, which, uh, there, uh, there was a judo club at, yeah, in Coventry, uh, separate to the other one. Uh, but that was in the evening now. And uh, so I said, OK, I'll, I'll ask him if I can join or something. And then uh, I joined judo there. And then uh, that was the beginning of it, basically. Uh -huh. And uh, before that, uh, I kind of got into the physical, like uh, some sort of physical routine where I was doing press-ups or sit-ups anyway. Uh, and uh, at school, coming from India and uh, being a quiet person, uh, you know, like sort of with, with the held, I just kept bullied. And yeah. a fair bit of, you know, got into a few fights, uh, didn't win them. And, uh, no, okay. Uh, yeah. yeah, you know, and uh, so uh, I had to do something about it, but I wasn't sure, but I never told anybody at, at home or anything where, uh, because it, it was the uh, embarrassment or, yeah, I think that's common, isn't it? I mean, yeah. you know, I got bullied at school. I got yeah. bullied at school and I never told my dad or anything like yeah. that. You know, yeah. you saw, you kept it to yourself, didn't you? Yeah, and uh, then uh, when he sort of gave me the green light to sort of uh, for, uh, to go and do judo, and I remember sitting down, having a concert, conscious uh, sort of a, a conversation with myself uh, uh, whether I should have, uh, go and do it or, 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 or not, you know, and uh, uh, then um, I thought like, well, if I did do it, take it up and uh, my life couldn't be any worse. Mm. You know? And then I, uh, I did take it up, but my, previously my interests were like uh, into the Bollywood films. That was a kind of a connection with India and all that. And so I was doing that. And uh, even to the point where I wanted to be in a Bollywood actor, but anyway, that's another story. <laughs> that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but anyway, sticking to the martial arts, it's, uh, uh, yeah, so uh, uh, went and joined judo. There were the instructors, Pete Reed. Uh, right. 
I can't remember what Dan or anything that he was. Mm. And uh, it was just like Pete. And there were several black belts in there and uh, some Asian ones, uh, brown belts. Then later on, they became black while I was still there. All and, right. Yeah, so uh, so we used, I used to do it Mondays and Fridays uh, every... And uh, I remember never missing a lesson, even to the point where we were knocking chimneys out at home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, so we, I was helping my dad knocking chimneys out and uh, it worked all day. And then, uh, yeah, well, I'm going to judo now and I didn't even miss it then. So I never mm. missed a lesson. And on top of that, uh, uh, because it was at school and after the lesson, I would uh, jog uh, in my, you know, I used to take the top off uh, the, uh, and with a t-shirt, but you know, the judo top off. Yeah. With my trousers, uh, the white trousers, yeah, I used to go jogging oh, uh, right. and you, and in the you, pit, you know, for yeah. 30 minutes Yeah, and uh, after each lesson. And uh, so I was, uh, I can't remember the athlete's name. It's a British woman. And it was kind of black and white. Uh, short age, uh, yeah, I see her once in a while. I still don't know her name. And it's always black and white footage. She was a British runner. Right. Uh, I had a, a seen a... Uh, an interview of us, uh, you know, which was only a few minutes uh, on TV, and some. The question was, uh, how uh, long should you run, or how much should you run? And she goes, till you drop. <laughs> you know, to, you know, and uh, that that was a bit of advice. The only bit of advice I had. And so when I used to run, it was hard. You know, obviously, like you wanted to give up, uh, uh, and I had no instruction or anything. I used to just no. pitch and start running. Every, every every time I was there. And uh, then, uh, so I thought like, well, I'm still standing, I'm still upright, so I haven't dropped yet, so I'm okay. So I just keep running. <laughs> and uh, uh, so that was my introduction to running, basically. And uh, the effect of uh, judo and uh, uh, the running had on me was uh, some of the, you know, the clever people at school, you know, were doing A-levels, and I used to always be on the lower group. Yeah, uh, and uh, because of a uh, lack of English, uh, and uh, so uh, that uh, my self-esteem was low, and all this uh, lack of confidence because of uh, I couldn't speak English basically properly. Mm. Uh, so that was the first time, you know, when uh, I was doing judo and uh, the, the the running at school, they used to uh, uh, I don't know, they started talking to me, right, and uh, so. Uh, before that, before that, nobody used to talk to me. I was just like, uh, right. sit on my own, basically. You know, I have nothing to say. Yeah. So, again, so do you think? Do you think doing the martial arts, obviously doing the judo that you started off with, give you give you more confidence, or did they think? Do you think it was they thought you were tougher, or? No, I think uh, I used to get bullied, as I mentioned earlier, and. Uh, yeah, we've both got T. Sign of old age, that. Yeah. You can't, can't function without these. No, absolutely. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, what it was, I used to get bullied, as I mentioned earlier. And uh, then uh, uh, when I uh, uh, was thinking of taking up martial arts, well, uh, or uh, taking up martial arts, or do that, yeah. I had a... Uh, remember making a mental hit list as well. Right. I was deadly serious about carrying it out. Like, you know, when I got my yellow belt or something, I was going to actually go around and beating all these guys. So, <laughs> you know, yeah. But I'm glad I didn't carry it through. You like know? a vendetta. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, you know, once I got, you know, the, like, the power, I'll, I'll get, it, get them back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, there was uh, one fight I did get into. It was over, over a chair. You know, it was just simply... Uh, we were, it was a PE lesson, and then uh, there was one chair, uh, you know, like anybody could sit on it, but every time I sat on it, this guy would, you know, oh, get off, you know, then he would sit on it. And then yeah. I throw in my broken English, sort of said, like, no, it's my chair, I was here first. He kind of pushed me off. And uh, I gave him a few digs, and that was the first fight I went, won, I actually, you know. Right. It was bigger how, than old, how old were you then, then? Uh, about 13 or 14. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, so you've been doing judo, what, you've been doing judo a couple of years, something like that? 
No, oh. for just a few months. Okay. Just a few months. It wasn't. Uh, oh yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, I don't use judo on it, but it was no hip throws or anything. It's just like no, no, no. You just give him a punch. Yeah, and uh, uh, it happened a couple of times uh, on it because then um, every time he would get up, I would sit down. Then it would kick off again, you know, and then uh, kill the teacher if it stepped in. And uh, so uh, I think uh, if you kind of uh, behave or uh, if you become a whip. Uh, a victim, people mm. will treat you like a victim. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, because uh, maybe it was my body language earlier, I was getting bullied. And uh, once I started running and, and a bit of judo, it's, um, people just left me alone, basically. Yeah. And uh, maybe it was some sort of persona I was giving off. Uh, it, it just left me alone. And that's what that's all I needed, wanted anyway. Yeah, I, think, I think that's true, you know, when... Um... When you get engaged in particular martial art, in fact, any yeah. type of fitness training, you do yeah. hold yourself differently, don't you? You know, and mentally, uh, you've got a different approach to things. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And there was a lot of uh, misunderstanding with judo as well. You know, the forward rolls, for example. Mm. Yeah. Why are we doing forward rolls? Oh, because it shows you how to fall. And, okay. And like idiots, okay, let's do a forward roll on a pavement. <laughs> yeah, great. <laughs> on, on a concrete, you know, normal, normal floor, tarmated floor. And we did it a few times. I used to hurt. You know, uh, most of the time it hurt. Once in a while, it, you know, you kind of got away with it. Yeah. And, uh, but now we know better. No, it's not. You don't actually do that on the. On the no. Floor. And uh, so it was, uh, uh, things like that. But then um, the guy that actually got me into it, uh, uh, he, and he also introduced me to Bruce Lee as well. Uh, it was a friend of mine, and uh, he came into school one day and uh, uh, called me Bruce. <laughs> okay. You know, and I was like, why? You know, and he goes, oh, because uh, uh, he's the best fighter in the world. And uh, But then I had just uh, come from India like uh, about a year earlier or something before that. And uh, so, and I just know Dala Singh is the, is the best fighter in the world, you know, world champion. Yeah, and uh, yeah, then he brought him some pictures of Bruce Lee or something. Uh, yeah, okay, fine. And uh, but then he insisted I go and watch his film, and uh, I'll go into that later. But anyway, uh, going staying with the judo, he had as I joined, he left judo basically, and uh, he obviously knew, knew more about Bruce Lee than I did. I, I I never heard of him, you know. And then yeah, he basically. He goes to me, well, by the time you grab somebody, you know, this is what we were taught in judo, you know, grabbing and doing hip throws. He goes, by the time you grab, go, go to grab somebody, you know, you're going to get punched in the face. Mm. And I was, nah, 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 a lot of people can do this and that, you know, and, uh, without the punching, you know. And uh, they even showed us a couple of punching uh, blocks against punching you were out in judo, but wouldn't have worked. But anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so he... Yeah, um, yeah. So, what, after one of the judo lessons, he came to see me. You know, I just finished, and he goes, uh, "That next uh, room is empty. The gym next. And it was a gymnasium sort of thing, pretty kitted out, like the with the rings and everything in there. Mm. You know, the, the gymnastic rings. Anyway, uh, he goes, "That's open. Let's go in there." And okay, and he goes, "Okay, let, let, let's see what you can do against me then." <laughs> so started moving around I didn't know anything other than what I was shown and then so we started moving around and uh, before long he sort of gave me a kick squared in the head you know and uh, so I got kicked in the head that was bit okay and it was that was my probably first sparring experience yeah introduction to uh, yeah. contact sparring mm. actually being struck yeah, and uh, so after a while, uh, he go, really started insisting that I, I go to uh, yeah, watch Bruce Lee film. And then uh, uh, I did, and by then I think I had already moved from judo to karate, because there was a really good karate club near us. Right. Yeah, uh, you no, know, it wasn't in the school premises, it was actual. 
you know. Yeah, so like a proper karate club, like. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and our instructors were Rick Jackson and Mark Jackson. And so yeah. one of us was, a, yeah, Mick Jackson and Michael Jackson. A pretty, pretty famous names, Rick Jackson. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. And, uh, he's still around, you know. Is he still alive? Yes, you know. Wow. Uh, I'm teaching uh, his uh, uh, stepdaughter's uh, son or something, you know. Yeah, like she goes, oh, yeah, he's my dad. You know, like stepdad. And I was worried. Well, yeah, a small world, you know. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, he, yeah, he's still around. And actually, I went to see him after 30 years or so. To, oh, okay. Um, you know, to, yeah. So I found, I found him his uh, number and somebody gave me his number and I went to interview him. And uh, after 30 years, and um, he was living in Leicester. I think he's still there. Oh, uh -huh. You know, and... Uh, yeah, it was interesting uh, to see him after 30 years. And he, he what, was, what style did Rick do? Was it Shotokan or what did he do? Uh, Shotokan. Shotokan, yeah, okay. Shotokan, yeah. And, uh, yeah, by doing karate with them, and uh, it kind of got me a little bit closer to what Bruce Lee was doing in the movies, you know, and uh, kicking and punching and all that stuff, which, uh, because in them days, uh, judo and karate was quite readily available. Yeah. Country anywhere at least. And then if somebody did Kung Fu, you know, that was the new thing to go. Yeah, it was pretty unusual, wasn't it? Yeah. So if uh, uh, somebody was doing Kung Fu, all the attention used to go on to them. So yeah. You were actually doing Kung Fu. And, uh, you know, actually, uh, uh, one thing about Kung Fu, it's. Uh, what, yeah, remember uh, something like Oh my, oh yeah, Kung Fu Theory and Practice, Mike. Oh, that's an old book. It is, and uh, what, the reason I'm showing it to you is uh, because uh, I remember this book from uh, uh, school days. Yeah. And uh, at the end, there's a, just a small section. God, one sec. Yes. Small section of uh, pictures. So about five or six pages. Yeah. Yeah. Can you see them? Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. And uh, so uh, I used to borrow this book from the library. And uh, so I remember tearing that section out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, Hopefully nobody from living memory can remember that book uh, <laughs> in the library. So if you've yeah. got that book out and yeah. you, some of the pictures were missing, you know who's got them. <laughs> Yeah, or had them. And, uh, <laughs> or had them, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so it was all like uh, generally secret moves together, you know. And uh, so uh, anyway, like, um, as I said, I joined up uh, the karate club. And uh, um, after the lesson, uh, well, you know, like kids, uh, uh, there were other kids there from, from the school or na around the neighborhood. Yeah. Uh, the, oh, let, let's spa. You know, uh, everybody was getting changed. So, okay. So I volunteered as well. And uh, that was a similar sort of experience again. I got uh, kicked in the gut and oh, uh, right. and uh, curled me over on the floor. And uh, so that was my introduction to karate, basically. And uh, mm. there I, I stayed there for a few years and uh, eventually yeah, working through the grades. Um, I think I had quit and then restarted right from the beginning after uh -huh. the belt or, or so restarted again from the beginning and then worked her way up to brown belt. Mm -hmm. uh, towards the end, uh, both the Kung Fu club, which I was doing simultaneously, which was uh, doing Kung Fu, which uh, was Shaolin Mokga with the- uh, Oh, Mokga, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Who, who was teaching that then in Kov? Yeah, Charles Chen. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. He's, uh, Actually, he's got, I've still got some of the paperwork, you know, the, the grading syllabuses and all that. Oh, right, yeah. For next time. And, uh, yeah, he, he was a Chinese guy. And, uh, but it, in this system, there were 12 forms, some weapon like the nunchucks, the staff, and uh, uh, the sai, tomfus. Yeah. Yeah, that sort of stuff. And uh, uh, in, in the syllabus, they would show... Uh, you know, the, the lap sao, which is like the pull and, you know, yeah, yeah. The lap sao da. Uh, they showed us uh, that was part of the syllabus. So we had to train that, the lap sao, 
on both sides and uh, well they, they would never show us the pack sound right okay which is the push hand you know the opposite of pull is push yeah and uh, so that was never shown and uh, although the instructor was chinese you know maybe hobby doesn't get offended but um uh, although the instructor was chinese but he was a very anti bruce lee at that time yeah yeah i can imagine a lot a lot of martial artists that i knew yeah. the older guys were yeah. all against him they yeah. said this is just the movies mm. um you know uh, it's nothing to do with real gung fu or real martial arts yeah mm. Yeah, and uh, so when we, uh, uh, you know, the Pak Sao was the cool move where, you know, you, you saw him do it many times in the movies. Yeah, yeah. But uh, never uh, uh, was taught. Both all like we learned it by watching the movies, you know, and trying on each other. And trying and copying it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah well, yeah. So this would have been the mid 70s then, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then before, yeah. And, uh, because uh, I was doing uh, karate and kung fu simultaneously Monday evenings once a week. It was kung fu, uh -huh. and uh, then uh, uh, the karate was uh, two, two or three times a week. Yeah, there was more cl classes available, and uh, but never told any of them. Like I did uh, when I was in the kung fu club, I never told them I did karate and uh, just keep my my shot and. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's still a little bit like that sometimes with some yeah. instructors where they don't want you to train with other people, do they? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And, and uh, it's more, more so in the 70s. Yeah, and uh, so when uh, 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 we were sparring in uh, one of the sessions uh, in, uh, in uh, Krati, well, in all, all the, well, actually, after... You know, I was a sort of jolly belt and all that. Around that time, we got to do some sparring, and I was able to pull up, uh, pull the Paxar off uh, pretty well. Okay. So, well, you know, put uh, trap, you know, uh, put the yeah, out and then hit him. back fist. You know, and it, it's basically we did that in karate anyway. So the only yeah, 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 in first and then do it. And uh, uh, there was one time, uh, time in particular, where we, it was two against one. You know, which we were allowed, uh, the instructor suggested that we do. And uh, there was one where I could uh, uh, see the one guy and one guy out of the corner of my eye. But I knew because of my focus was on him, but this is the one that was going to attack, uh, you know, come, come in and while we were sparring. And so as uh, I did it, and uh, it sort of cut his eye uh, straight down. And he, <laughs> okay. Yeah, he, he went down like a sack of potatoes. Basically, you know, just uh, on, on the floor. And uh, so, uh, obviously, I apologized and, uh, uh, you know, told the instructor what had happened. And uh, so, it was, we had to take him to the hospital as well afterwards to get some stitches. And oh. oh, so you really did split his eye then? Yeah. Yeah. It, it just caught him, you know, right. Yeah. And uh, never done it after that. Or, but anyway, that's what happened then. And so the the Paksa does work, but it wasn't taught in Kung Fu. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah Self-taught. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, so that was my sort of earlier experience, some of the experience. And then in, in the karate, some of the things here, I remember this, the place being very, very cold, you know. It was basically a, an old building, mm. and it used to leak at times, and but they only had like a small, heaters which would did absolutely nothing <laughs> yeah useless yeah yeah and, I, think, uh, I think everybody of our generation used to train in gyms like that yeah they were always wet they were always cold and yeah. there was always like like you say one heater or two yeah. if you were lucky you were lucky we only yeah. had one little radiator that never seemed to do anything at all yeah and and then uh, 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 they would make a stretch and uh, you know the sports science would have a heart attack uh, 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 looking at it, watching us. You know. Oh, that, yeah, the stretching back then. Yeah, yeah. It was basically, you know, one time in particular, uh, it was uh, split up in groups of four, the whole club, and uh, basically one guy going into the box splits, and uh, two guys pulling on your legs, and the third actually see. you. And uh, uh, you know, they, they, it was things like that, and uh, then, um, but we got through it, survived. Mm. And uh, actually, one of the uh, sessions we were doing, I remember the old big, uh, big name. Yeah, if you want to put this out, I don't know. It's but anyway, it was uh, Jeff Thompson was in our group. And, oh uh, yeah, because Jeff did mock. Didn't Jeff yeah. do mock guard at one point? 
Yeah, he did both there for the karate. Ah, uh -huh, yeah, 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 because he was yeah, doing Shotokan with Ian McCrane as well, wasn't he? Yeah, it was be, that, that came after. No, it was much later, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, but the actual Shotokan he started off with was in the same club as myself. We were both white belts in 19, I don't know, 74, 70. Wow, okay. Yeah. It, I think it was more 74, around yeah. that time, maybe under 74. And uh, I remember him because uh, uh, he's the, he was the only one uh, wearing a black suit. Everybody else was being karate, he was white suit. And uh, so uh, anyway, I think he got uh, the, the suit given to him by one of the other instructors. Uh, uh, and uh, so that's uh, how I remember him, you know, the guy with the black suit. Yeah, the guy with the black karate gi. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah that's why he's but then, um, yeah, yeah, we we trained all the way up to kind of a purple belt uh, or close to brown belt uh, level. And then when we went into the kung fu club, he was there as well. Right. And uh, so again, we used to, uh, uh, you know, uh, just train together. And I think, uh, yeah, not think I had to spar him uh, for one of the gradings for my fourth grade in kung fu. You know, like they would do, yeah, I think two or three rounds. Mm. And so, again, looking back, a little bit silly because it was a full contact sparring, you know, the kicks as well. And uh, then, you know, them uh, uh, socks type of things you had to put on your. Oh, yes, yeah. And they were very, just a, a layer of. Uh, <laughs> like that foam stuff. Yeah. It was like a socks uh, uh, thing, yeah. fingers uh, uh, with a stitch in the middle. And uh, there was a little, just a little bit of a square sponge up to here, just That's it. in your knuckles. Yeah. That's all we had. And, uh, so, uh, you know, at that time also, I had uh, been introduced to boxing as well, been, done some boxing in, in a boxing club. And so we were sparring. And uh, I know, obviously, what bare knuckle damage can do. And uh, but, uh, I had to do three rounds with him like that. And I did, I did come up with an outer with a little bit of a lump at the end. Yeah. But, yeah, but I think that was quite common, you know, in, yeah. in, uh, yeah. in martial arts anyway. Particularly yeah, yeah. in those days, there wasn't a lot of control. No, there was uh, supposed to be. <laughs> yeah, once you start uh, sign the word Viva, Wait, Viva, sorry, and it didn't, it didn't matter then. Uh, uh, but in the Kung Fu, in the boxing club, that wasn't, uh, uh, even that was uh, some of the stuff uh, was a bit questionable. Like, uh, mm. uh, one, one drill they used to make us do every lesson was every, you know, the, it would be about, I don't know, 50, 10, 15, 20 people in, in the club. Yeah. In the kids' training. And uh, then, all right. Everybody in the into the boxing ring, all mm. the, you know, all in one go, and uh, everybody was allowed to hit everybody, you know. And uh, it, but one thing it did teach you was to keep your guard up, and it was you know you got your guard up and you're going, you know, uh, uh, doing stuff, and it was sometimes you look up, you know, like just bringing your head up. Yeah, like you got hit about three times because so. <laughs> there's people everywhere. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it was that you just had to cover cover yourself up, and uh, and then uh, I remember the one time there was this uh, guy with muscles, uh, you know, uh, short stocky type, you know, and uh, while they, everybody was in the ring, and uh, I, I saw him from the side, and I got a really clean uh, shot on him, right on the ear on the side, and. Uh, uh, it got him a, a, a square on, and then I thought, like, shit, right, carry him, move away. <laughs> Although if he, if he finds out it was me, like, I, yeah, I, so he didn't find out it was you, yeah, yeah. Hit him and run, yeah, yeah, just, just turn away, and <laughs> yeah, pretend it wasn't uh, you. Yeah, he's gonna kill me, yeah, yeah, because you would have killed him, yeah. So it, it was a uh, good guy like, in them days. Uh, he, I think the, it was more of a, uh, a search uh, journey because. Yeah. You know, there, there wasn't much information available, like, you know, I just showed you that Kung Fu book. That's and, right. I mean, there was only, well, there was only a couple of magazines out at that time as well. Yeah. You know, you had uh, Karate and Oriental Arts, you had maybe Black Belt. Uh, uh, yeah. But you, had, you could only find them at really dodgy bookshops, I remember. <laughs> Seriously, in, in the Northeast, there was an adult bookshop. Oh, right. And 
that's where you had to go to get a copy of Black Belt magazine in the 70s. Wow. It was, yeah. Honestly. And you'd yeah. come out with it in a brown paper bag and then quickly <laughs> take it out and let people see that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a martial arts magazine. Yeah. It's, yeah. A, you, know, you know, like a, a Bruce uh, a Tegner. It, it, oh, I, oh yeah. hey, one of the first books I read on karate was Bruce Tegner. Yeah. Don't even, and I've got Bruce Tegner's book somewhere in yeah. the house. Yeah, I've got him here somewhere lying somewhere. Yeah, the, the original Bruce Tegner karate book. Teach and yourself was, karate. Yeah, try, he's trying to uh, learn some forms. He's a uh, uh, big yeah. in the food box. Yeah, I'm going to say. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is an old one as well. You probably won't remember it, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, my. Uh, I never used to buy many books. I recognise them, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I never used to buy books on Kung Fu because, yeah. obviously, my big yeah. thing... I, I, I used... Uh, Robert W. Smith's book on Xing Yi and Bagua. I remember yeah. buying them. Bagua, Xing Yi, yeah. and Chen Man Ching's Tai Chi Chuan. Yeah. Um, I quite like the internal arts mm -hmm. um, because I had a lot of links with Goju Ryu, which is what I, as I, one of the arts that I did, as you know, Goju. Yeah. But this is not about me. Um, <laughs> um, so it's, 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 so you, you're into the, so you, you start with judo, which is a surprise because yeah. I can't remember ever having this conversation with you. So you start off yeah. in judo. Uh, yeah. And then uh, quickly got involved in traditional karate, Shotokan yeah. with Rick yeah. Jackson and Gung Fu as well. Yeah. And doing Mok Ga, Shaolin, uh, Shaolin Mok Ga, yeah? Yeah, uh, it was uh, on the license, well, for, well the, the membership card. Yeah. It used to spell it Mok Ka, M-A-K dash K-A. Oh, okay, okay. But, uh, and now they're spelling it with uh, G-A-R, I think. Uh, G-A-U or G-A, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it was like uh, in the family of Lao Ga, Hung Ga, Mok Ga. And one so this, so you were, you were doing your Kung Fu, you were doing yeah. your Karate and, yeah. you know, starting to test it a little bit, I guess yeah. you could say, with the sparring, which yeah. is the best way to test your martial art. Yeah. Um, what, what, so you got, you, you'd, you'd heard about Bruce Lee anyway. Um, yeah. And what, so what got you involved? Did that come out of the karate and the kung fu, the interest in the Jeet Kune Do, or did no, the extreme come? Yeah, so what's the story? Okay, it was, uh, well, we, everybody in the club, uh, pretty much, uh, especially the kung fu club, uh, they all used to go and watch the movies. You know, uh, I think the Bruce Lee films in Coventry uh, would, uh, uh, be shown somewhere in one of the theatres at least uh, every three months. Yeah. And so when uh, they used to come, well, when they used to be on, you know, alongside with other kung fu movies as well, like you know, you know uh, Dragon's Teeth, I can remember, you know, Warriors Two and all that. And uh, then we used to go and watch them. And um, I used to always uh, uh, watch it uh, like the uh, Bruce Lee movie twice. So yeah, used yeah. Basically set. Uh, to stay in the cinema. Stay in the cinema, yeah, that's what we used to do. And, yeah, and uh, so uh, it, it was just basically watching them and uh, buying Kung Fu Monthly and being aware of, uh, you know, the little bits of information. And then uh, I remember when Game of Death came out and actually uh, Game of Death was, uh, when it came out, it was in the summer, I think, of uh, 78 or something. Sounds about right, yeah. Yeah, and... Uh, it was a really hot day, like uh, it's been like the last couple of weeks. Uh, I'd walked uh, something like about four miles to get to my class because it was a sunny summer's day. I thought rather than catching a bus, I'd walk it. And uh, then uh, got there to the club, no one there. And they all gone to see the game of death. Uh, oh, uh, okay. Yeah, it was the first showing. And at least I waited till this weekend. Um, yeah. So uh, uh, then I'd walk back <laughs> and, uh, you know, things like, so it was bits and pieces. That's how I got introduced. And uh, a lot of the introductions, even, even in Muay Thai, the introduction was, uh, 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 you know, that Kung Fu, uh, sorry, the Muay Thai book. Uh, I have it here somewhere. Mm, which one? Um, is that the thin one? one? The really huh? thin? Yeah. Yeah, the, um, oh, yeah, I, I gave my copy away years ago. Um, yeah. It was one of the first books ever written in English by an American guy, wasn't it? 
Yeah, here it is. Yeah. Oh, you've still got it. Let's have a look. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and, oh, yeah I'll give mine away. I wish I'd never given it away now. Yeah, and uh, where is it gone? You know, the, uh, I don't, hope you don't mind me mentioning uh, British Thai Boxing Council. That's oh, no, 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 not at all. Logo. Pictures are falling out. That's the original uh, photograph that was used for the British Thai Boxing Council. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, so yeah, anyway, uh, I'd read this book cover to cover in the 70s while I was doing Kung Fu and Karate. Yeah. Yeah, I think it is, I won't go through it, but there's a picture of it like, uh, uh, you know, where you you stand like this in Moita. Yeah. So I went in my Kung Fu club and <laughs> sparring. Yeah, this is, I learned this from a book, right? And I uh, got, you know, the guy kicked me in, in the midsection. And uh, again, curled on the floor, winded me. And uh, so little knowledge is a dangerous thing. Yeah, 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 absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I think we've all done that, where we've copied something and then made yeah. a real mess of it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and because uh, I didn't know anything else about Muay Thai, or other than that, it's supposed to be tough. And, yeah, that guard. And, and the guard of- uh, Big open guard, yeah. yeah. Typical uh, anyway. 70s, 70s yeah. style Muay Thai. Yeah. And then uh, going back to the Kondo thing, obviously through the movies and so on, and uh, the, uh, yeah, uh, sorry, I'm just looking at, but to mention this, uh, the Filipino martial arts, uh, they, they were about the same time because, uh, uh, you know, the two, two posters came out uh, by Danny and Santo uh, with right. the basic strikes and his All book. the basic angles. Yeah. And uh, I had got, got them, and uh, my introduction was that two of that kids at work in the engineering place, uh, you know, they, they, they were sort of had sticks and they were doing stuff. Mm. And, uh, so I asked them, you know, what it was, and he goes, oh, it's Screamer. And uh, then, uh, so I started, uh, they started showing, showing it to me, and uh, that's all right. You know, when it's like just this and that and all that. So, what is this? You know, it, where, where's all the like spinning stuff? You know, the kung fu, the, <laughs> yeah, the martial yeah. arts. You know, any anybody can do this. You know, yeah. Uh, uh, so, and I said, you know, okay. Uh, that was my first introduction to it. And when uh, about the same weekend, I went and got uh, the posters myself. And even then, looking at them, it was too too simple. You know the. the and then, you want more, don't you? You expect yeah, it to be more. Yeah, yeah. yeah the yeah. 12 angles and all that. And then uh, later, uh, I think it was 79, 1979, then Danny and Santa came to Birmingham. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've got the original, still got the original flyer of that somewhere. Wow, wow. And uh, yeah, I'll collect all the, <laughs> uh, maybe a bit of martial arts order. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so he came in the... Uh, around that time uh, to uh, that shot, uh, CIMAC or CIMAC? Uh, oh, CIMAC up in Birmingham and Sparky. Yeah. yeah, he came there and, and so I thought, well, I've got to go and see him because uh, this is the man who taught Bruce Lee the nunchucks, you know. Yeah. So, and when uh, we got there, I uh, 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 went for his autograph. Again, being shy or, or quiet, I didn't have the guts to ask him, can I have a photo with you? And, <laughs> and I just got, oh, um, got a bit of a piece of paper, can you sign this? And uh, uh, then uh, the TV company we came or something called News App, six o'clock news or something came and uh, to uh, film him basically, do a little yeah. interview with him. And uh, so then uh, they decided, okay, let's take him to the park or opposite the road, across the road. And so he went there and we followed him, a little crowd. And uh, he started teaching us for about, uh, uh, at least 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes. Okay. And uh, the thing was that uh, he, the, the, all the other weapons he showed, like were the, uh, the sticks, the stick and knife, double sticks, uh, even the ballet songs he showed, and there was a pair of nunchucks on the floor. And they're like, we're looking, well, when should we do that? <laughs> so uh, then, then he's like, that's it. And then uh, we said, like, oh, can you show, show us the nunchucks? And yeah, no, no, no. It's, uh, then he, we insisted, and he, he um, sort of picked on me. He goes, "Well, actually, he did a little bit." He goes, "Actually, the, this is the worst weapon out of the whole uh, Filipino martial arts." 
you know, he goes, the only reason and him and Bruce used them in the in the movies because it was the prettiest. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's it, you know. And whereas before, up till that point, I thought it was the ultimate weapon. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, what well, you do when you're younger, because you, it's spectacular, yeah. isn't it? It's spectacular. Yeah, uh, I was yeah. only uh, 18, 19 then, you know, it was something. Yeah. And there's a, I, I had the impression that it could even take a guy with a sword, you know, because that's what you saw in the movies. And uh, up to that point, you know, then he, uh, uh, I was heavily into the nunchucks, and uh, but then I kind of took a step back. And uh, because uh, with the nunchucks, I thought like I wanted to use them double sticks that Bruce Lee used down to the dragon, you know. Yeah. I wanted to learn them properly, you know. And uh, so after researching into it, there's somebody said, oh, it, it's, uh, it comes from the, it's a, martial art called Torpino, uh, sorry, Kali or something, or Screamer, and uh, it's, it comes from the Philippines, and I never heard of the Philippines, you know, so mm. for my geography sessions, and uh, yeah, uh, yeah, so then, then I later on found out it wasn't just a two-stick system, it, it basically was a sword system, obviously I'd seen Daniel Santo, he said it was a sword system, single stick, single sword, single axe, single machete, whatever else. Yeah. And then the double, double stick, double sword, double axe, double machetes. And then obviously the empty hand comes into it, the double daggers. So there's 12 categories. And yeah. that's a difference, you know, from uh, without uh, sounding like a history lesson, uh, uh, where the, uh, the word screamer and honest are uh, Spanish terms. Yeah or French, and, uh, you know, uh, so European terms for the Philippine martial arts, so, you know. Mm -hmm. So the, the Kali, in which uh, I know some people out there have said it was the, uh, means the word S-H-I-T, you know, it's shite, basically. And uh, but then that doesn't serve uh, anybody, really, you know, if you're... No. Uh, using double three terms for, for a martial art and, and yet you're practicing it and uh, so what, what did the Filipino martial arts uh, sorry Filipinos call the martial art before the Spanish arrived and there are uh, many names but there are something like 7,000 islands you know depending on the fatalities and all that then there's 6,000 something and each one uh, have a different dialects uh, different languages different training methods, fighting methods, and weaponry is different weapons and so on. So yeah. uh, I think one term, depending on which region you go to, will, they will have a different term. But the word, uh, uh, and then also there's uh, two types of history. There's the Filipino, Philippines history. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah uh, sorry. History from the Philippines of the Filipino people. And then there's history, uh, Filipino history of the American Filipinos. Mm -hmm. yeah. America, how they develop, and, and yeah. the, the term Kali, if from what uh, Guru Dan uh, uh, says, is uh, uh, it comes from the two, it's a abbreviation of two words, which come up the hook, and uh, so uh, it means uh, body motion or hand motion. Right. You know, Kamut, K A, comes from the first word, uh -huh. I, yeah, it comes from the second word, the hook, and uh, so put the two words together, that's Kali. But there's also the word a Kali, Kalis, is also a name of a sword, but that's not linked with the, with the actual... Right, with the actual original meaning. Yeah, description. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, some, some uh, instru uh, uh, teachers or masters will still have, are still calling their martial art like the uh, Sarada, a screamer, and they spell it with the, the C. Mm. Yeah, yeah, C, yeah. They spell it with a C, and then a lot of the others spell it with a K, a screamer. Yeah. And uh, then uh, there's a car, uh, Lustrissimo, Carles, uh, Villabrel, Paul, his art, Carly, Ben Dugusa. Obviously, he was the, the uh, next person after Villabrel. Uh, they call it Carly, you know. And yeah. It's a lot, lot of spirituality connected to it. Uh, uh, again, in threes, you know, like the triangle. Yeah. Uh, where the the reason, uh, like Dan uh, Guru Dan explains, is uh, the reason we're training martial arts, we're training so hard uh, in martial arts uh, 
it's not because we want to kill or enjoy violence. It's because, uh, uh, you know, if you imagine a triangle, at the very top is uh, uh, love, and uh, then it's humility and compassion. Mm -hmm. So if uh, somebody is uh, using, you know, threatens you, which it, your life or, uh, you know, uh, your threatens you or your family, your family member, uh, they're basically threatening what you love, you know, family member or your, or personally, your basic life, they're trying mm -hmm. to take away from you. And if there's a threat, like a punch, you're throwing a punch or a weapon at you, and you basically destroy that, and once the, you, you destroy the threat, then you show the person, you know, you know compassion, because uh, you have to understand, just as you are, somebody, mm -hmm. the father or son or whatever, mother, father, you know, sister, uh, the other person is also related to somebody else. Mm. And he, he's also somebody's son, and, and so you've got to, you should uh, show them compassion. And he, humility is uh, uh, basically uh, just knowing your place in the big picture, not like uh, where you're sort of, uh, oh, I'm humble, uh, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm no good uh, at what I do, you know, I'm not that good. Nobody said, uh, you know, you were ever good anyway. And uh, so the humility, basically, I see it as like just knowing your place in the big picture, in the, the cosmic, yeah, you know, the spiritual side, and it makes you feel like how tiny you are. Even in, don't want to really go into the religious side, but uh, in in the Sikhism, they say like uh, in order to enter the gate, uh, gates of heaven, they, uh, sorry, yeah, the gates of heaven are very tiny. It's very small, so you have to be very tiny to get through. So you have to be humble. Humble, yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. It's very small. And uh, uh, so, yeah, it's sort of a, it's all linked, you know. So I suppose because when you're doing uh, all these martial arts, like whether it's karate, the traditional ones, I mean, because they all came from the weaponry anyway. Mm. So, and that's an important point, actually. A lot of people don't realize that, you know, human beings, in order to defend and protect themselves would pick up an object because it makes more sense to hit someone with a stick, a knife, or a sword yeah. than it does to use empty hands. And I think, you know, it's like a lot of the martial arts and particularly the Thai martial arts are the same. You know, the Krabi Krabong probably came first, to be perfectly honest. You know, yeah. men were forging swords and, and making weapons long before they were developing an art of fighting yeah. bare knuckle, because that just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, even um, knuckle stuff, uh, like the English uh, uh, boxing, for example, um, yeah, James, uh, uh, I can't reach, it is a book here, so. Yeah, it was up there first. Yeah, in this book. Oh, it? right, straight left, Jim Driscoll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and there's a couple of others by him and all that too. And uh, uh, they're, they're the original ones. And even uh, in his book and a couple of other books as well, uh, uh, I think it was James uh, Finch uh, Biggs, or uh, he, had, he had an academy in London on uh, uh -huh. uh, Tox, no, I can't remember now, uh, uh, Tox, uh, in, yeah, I can't remember the top of my head now. Anyway, he had an academy in London. Yeah. And that's where the, uh, uh, boxing started from, uh, and uh, he sort of like you know from the quarter staff. Yeah, yeah, they dropped the uh, staff down and it became like this. It became that, yeah, yeah. It just makes perfect sense, yeah. Yeah, and then, uh, but his academy wasn't a uh, well. His academy was where he was teaching the quarter staff uh, the stick and, and the sword. It was basically a sword fighting academy. Mm. Uh, so the guard came from there, and the tactics would be, uh, you know, the same sort of tactics as if they had in sword fighting. Yeah. They were doing it with bare knuckles. Yeah. And uh, so uh, then uh, th that's how that came about, basically, you know. And so even boxing has its origins in weaponry. And they say, like, uh, the yeah, boxing is basically sword fighting without the sword. But then with the Filipinos, uh, you know, there was a, a thing uh, when the, I think in the Second World War, or the, or the first one, when the Americans went into the Philippines. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, my history isn't that good, but it was General MacArthur period, you know. And uh, they saw the boxers uh, there. 
uh, and they had the footwork. Mm. Yeah, the Filipinos have always had a good tradition of being good boxers as well, haven't they? Yeah, and they, uh, you know, they were moving like Muhammad Ali and at that time. Yeah. yeah. And even his uh, footwork uh, has some sort of linkage with the uh, that guy called a uh, boxer called Gabriel Flashlander. Uh huh. Yeah, and they were good friends. Uh, and uh, there's, I have an article where uh, that uh, Gabriel's uh, sister is saying, I'm not sure uh, if Ali learned it, Muhammad Ali learned it off his brother, off her, mm. or uh, it was, uh, you know, like he already copied it or he was inspired from him. Because they yeah. were friends, they knew each other, and, and uh, Muhammad Ali had been to the house a few times. Right, because Muhammad Ali definitely had a different style, Cassius Clay as he was. Yeah. Yeah, it had a significantly different style of boxing to most boxers at the time, didn't he? Yeah, I mean, there's a uh, big digging out books. Uh, That's all right. I, I do the same thing when I'm doing my live feed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> books um, are great. It's yeah, always good to see yeah. books. I love books. This one uh, uh, was, uh, I mean, Guru Dan sort of showed this book to us. Uh, ah, okay. On one of the seminars. Yeah, uh, he was teaching some drills, and this Filipino guy came up to him uh, and said, "Like, well, what are you do teaching uh, and doing? Teaching these drills? They're from the Philippines." And he wasn't aware of it at that time. No, they were from the Philippines. And uh, anyway, long story short, uh, uh, Bruce, uh, he went back to Bruce because he was still alive at the time. He goes, "Where did you get them drills from? Uh, you know, the boxing drills." And he. Uh, which they goes out from this book. Mm. And, uh, but then uh, it's sort of like going full circle, like where uh, it's Filipino, but they, were, they, I don't know how, how to sort of put it across, but um, anyway, the, the Americans wrote uh, uh, their manual on it, boxing manual on, on the Filipino boxing. Uh -huh. The information they got from the Philippines. And that's where the switch was from this. Yeah, to that, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and uh, the Filipino boxing, or the, uh, from, from uh, where originally they were saying out, boxing is sword fighting with the, without the sword. Now it's uh, blade fighting, or, or sorry, knife fighting without the, uh, without the knife, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, I mean, th this is true of the historical European martial arts scene as well. Yeah. You know, the, the tradition of boxing empty hand is only a, probably a few hundred years old and yeah. modern obviously it's only a hundred years old yeah um but the influence of uh, other systems came into play later but yeah, yeah basically everybody was carrying every every you know fairly well off man had a sword or at least a knife you know and, uh, and brawls would usually end up with people being caught or stabbed yeah uh, it was very yeah. rare that would they would have a square goal you know that came much yeah. later yeah and also uh, I think uh, the life uh, was either cheap or more. They, they weren't. They were a lot more gruesome, or you know. Uh, oh, people didn't care. There was no. There was no morality. Um, you know, and and there was there was no. Um, the laws were much laxer. We didn't have yeah. any uh, kind uh, of uh, yeah. of of police force to police the streets. So right. even even in Victorian times, life was, as you say, pretty cheap and and pretty mean, uh, yeah. because there was no, you know, there was a good chance you could murder someone and get away with it. Oh yeah. And going be beyond that, I mean, if somebody pulled a knife, you could kill them. You know, it was perfectly yeah. acceptable. If somebody tried to kill you, you could kill them with your sword. That's right. It's. Uh, uh, can I just uh, stop a second and uh, I want to dig out this book for you to make. To make an important point, I hear it. It's that's all yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. No. No. That's fine. Yeah. Fine. Right. And uh, like we're talking about the violence uh, in sport itself, uh, uh, taking it to another level. Yeah. It, it's from this book. Oh yeah. There you go, Robert W. Smith, Fighting yeah. Arts. Yeah. Yes. You, you, you see this picture? Yeah. The wrestlers. Yeah. yeah basically, wrestling. It looks like a, a normal kushti a, a a match uh, where they, you know, wrestle in the dirt. In the dirt. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, that's all they had. They didn't have mats in them days. No, no, of course not. Yeah, so, but if you look closely at that picture, uh, where is it gone? Yeah. Yeah, the guy's got a knuckle duster. Yeah. Yeah, so they used to uh, use a knuckle dusters in India in the wrestling matches. You know, Marvellous. 
Yeah, it's, uh, it's <laughs> don't you wish it was the good old days? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, there's a description of the the I thought you know there's a, I don't know if you can see it, but there, there's yeah. uh, uh, they're holding something in the hand. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, like so when you see it like this, it makes you un understand. Even my judo instructor uh, once uh, pulled me to one side, uh, and he goes, uh, "Look, the reason." the judo is the way it is uh, it's because uh, imagine uh, right it was designed to throw big people you know with bulky people with armor yeah. and that's where the handles are you know yeah. armor and uh, that's where so uh, that's why they hold uh, the geese and so on but they're throwing like this yeah uh, then uh, you know my game in judo uh, went from here to there i mean uh, because they are Actually, just to clarify it, I did judo when I was younger, and then about 20 years later, I rejoined the judo for a uh, short time again. Yeah. And, uh, so I was older by then, and uh, uh, things were different. My body wasn't moving the same way anymore. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, but, uh, the instructor pulled me to one side, and then he goes, oh, this is how you, uh, why judo is the way it is, because it's designed to throw people with armor on. Yeah. As the karate is the same way when you're punching like uh, the old reverse punch from the hip you had a tongue or something or a sigh in your hand and it was going through uh designed to go through armor you know they bump the armor when they have it yeah and uh, uh yeah and or, or the you know the punch through it the bamboo armor to in order to get to the person yeah, yeah. they're the original ideas yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, sort of like, I mean, sort of, yeah. yeah. I mean, when I did karate, they had us conditioning our hands when I was 10 years old. Yeah. When I was ridiculous. <laughs> I've still got <laughs> smashed yeah. up hands as a result. I haven't got arthritis, luckily. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. yeah. So yeah. the journey so far has taken us from, obviously, when you first came to the UK from India, yeah. uh, you lived down in Kent. You then eventually moved up to Coventry, where you're based now. Yeah. Uh, where you have uh, the Talk Martial Arts Academy, which has been yeah. going a long time now. Mm -hmm. um, and we've we've had the journey through, obviously, karate and kung fu. Yeah. Um, and then uh, the the influence of Dan Inosanto when you met him in 79, mm -hmm. uh, the introduction at West Scream, I guess. Um, yeah. and, and and obviously, you, you, you start to get heavily involved in the Jeet Kune Do, uh, the Muay Thai, and of course, combat submission wrestling's a, a whole other thing as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, so obviously, but we've we've gone easily up to the hour now. Um, uh, so what I'd like to do at this point, uh, and unless you've got anything short that you want to add, yeah. Um, sort of wrap it up at this point. Okay. Uh, and then we're going to get you. We're going to obviously the story hasn't finished yet, um, yeah. and it's going to go on. So. Yeah. We're going to do another, we're going to, you know, with your permission, we'll get you back and we'll continue the talk uh, yeah. because we still haven't got right through to the present day yet. We're far from it, really. Yeah. You had lots, really you've had lots of, no, but well, you've had lots of different influences over the years. Yeah. I mean, how old, you're, you're in your 60s now, aren't you? Yeah, well, it's turned 60 just before the lockdown. Yeah, it turned 60 before the lockdown. So I've got yeah. four years on you. Uh, yeah. So you, you started <laughs> in 72, essentially, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. And so we've got a bit of a, and we're only about, where are we now? About 83, 84? Yeah, but well, I think we're still... We're not, we're not at 83 yet, because you haven't talked yeah. about Dan coming the second time. Yeah. It's, uh, uh, yeah, there was, um, just to like wrap it up, as you said, like, uh, there was one thing I wanted to mention was, you know, like the switch uh, of, uh, uh, as I said, like in the earlier days, I did a, I had done judo and I did karate for a good few years. Yeah. And so I was training, uh, you know, uh, well, basically almost every day. And I was even going running in the morning, you know, uh, mm. waking up at like the five o'clock or six o'clock and going running in the morning and so on. And uh, uh, then uh, coming home, having a bath and then getting ready to uh, go to work and be on the court one of the corners where I would be picked up by a van. Yeah. Seven o'clock, otherwise they'd yeah. leave you behind. And uh, so uh, uh, one time uh, I was in, in a pub 
Yeah, you know, I, I never used to drink, but my, all my mates did. And uh, so I was a little bit bored and there was a crowded, you know, pub. And I just, just to hang around with the most, well, because they were my, my mates, you know, that's uh, what they did. And uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, so I was with them. And uh, uh, so with because uh, I was bored and I was kind of um, consciously like uh, looking around uh, the pub and uh, wait, wait weighing things so I thought like what if, you know like what about if I kicked off with that guy yeah like, yeah yeah I used to do that, that guy or so on what would really happen you know yeah. I, I do martial arts uh, pretty much uh, every day or you know training at home and everything you know and uh, uh, what would really happen if it really did kick off you know was not not play fighting but real fighting like oh that. yeah yeah and uh, and I'm not very big or well, I'm a small guy compared to, you know, the others. Is something happening here? Okay, sorry. And, yeah. Are so, you okay? Yeah, yeah. It's fine. Something came up on the computer. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, uh, anyway, the, uh, I was looking around and weighing anything so up. And, uh, uh, you know, when you like uh, really searching for the answer in your heart of hearts or, you know, r deep down in your, with everything you've had, uh, all your experience and um, the answer was no, you know, I, I couldn't deal, you know, if I kept on like the Lamai Gary on or something, or if I get the spinning kicks or, you know, yeah. really, you know, uh, did my best shot on them, their hands are bigger, their legs are bigger, you know, and uh, so they're going to do one back on me and kill me basically. And uh, so I had kind of stepped away from martial arts for a short time. Okay. You know, and Kung Fu, it was illusion. You know, it, it basically, yeah. It, and then um, I stepped away. Then I'm going to more into like the boxing training and, and doing the road work and doing the weight training. Although I was right. doing training before anyway. Yeah. Uh, more into that. And uh, then when I did see Dan uh, in 1979, yeah. uh, in that time, uh, he was like, a, Absolutely amazing, you know, like uh, doing some knife stuff, and uh, there'll be a knife uh, literally sticking about an inch away from his uh, throat. Mm -hmm. uh, in the, then um, I thought, and he's still talking, you know, like explaining things, and he's like, da -da -da -da, and the knife uh, here, here, and, and then he'd be like, you know, like the sticks were nothing to him. And uh, it, because in, in back in the day, like uh, uh, if somebody did a normal strike at you and, and you just did a uh, kind of some sort of roof block. Yeah over your head and then it was like wow I can look what I can do so that that was just like laughable and so when I saw uh, Dan doing his stuff and I thought yeah, that's what it, I in, it inspired you inspired me and got me back in the martial arts. I got you back in oh okay so that's where we'll pick up then in part two we'll yeah. pick up where you got you had your little break but you've been inspired by uh, Dan and Asanto yeah and if people don't know who Dan and Asanto is, shame on you. But go and look them up. Um, probably one of the most influential martial artists of the 20, 20th century. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, look him up. Um, so we'll pick up, yeah, sorry, look, we'll pick up uh, again on part two. Yeah. Uh, and we'll start from that period of time and work our way through probably to the present day. Yeah. We'll see where we go. So. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Thanks very okay. much for that. That was an important okay. point to make at the end there. And uh, okay. it's, a, it's a good little pick up for when we come back on in part two. It's so well, thanks very, very much for coming on. Uh, it's been a really interesting hour. Um, you need to write a book, like a biography. And, okay. uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, more and cause, well, there's not many of us left, man, to be honest. There's not many of us. Uh, and a lot of people now, young martial artists, yeah. They haven't heard of half the names that uh, you've mentioned. Well, Rick Jackson, you know, I yeah. can guarantee, you know, not yeah. a lot of people in karate have even heard of Rick Jackson. It surprises me when people haven't heard of Anoida Sensei. Yeah. You know, I like you've got third dance and you go, oh, you, I trained with Anoida and they go, who's he? Yeah. Thanks. Okay. So people need educating. It's, it's a lineage, isn't it? It's important to keep that That's lineage. Right. So, um, sorry. Yeah, go on, Lucky. Yeah, I was going to say like I well, once uh, uh, got, got a chance, had a chance to talk to Terry O'Neill.
from the, from Shah Rukh Khan. He was on yeah. one of the shows, and the, actually like almost like one to one really. And uh, the one I uh, told him that I was trained with a uh, Rick, uh, Rick Jackson in the back in the day. Sorry, back in the day, and uh, he actually said, uh, him, uh, "Well, there was a group of uh, karate guy instructors uh, or senseis uh, doing uh, this uh, workshop or seminar, where there's uh, one one instructor would have so many students and another one with so many students." Yeah. And uh, when uh, Jackson was doing uh, uh, his thing as well, and when uh, Terry O'Neill saw him, and um, you know doing you know karate uh, teaching and he told his group let's stop and watch that <laughs> yeah. and uh, he goes i'm not saying this because he's your instructor he is um, he's he said like uh, said like generally uh, that he is one of the best in the europe you know in the world maybe you know? yeah and, and hardly anybody knows who he is it's yeah. sad isn't it and, and he, okay lucky well look Thanks very much, mate. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, okay. And we'll pick up part two yeah. uh, the next time we're on, which will be in a couple of weeks' yeah. time, no doubt. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, no, 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 thanks very much, Lucky. So, mm -hmm. guys, uh, you've been listening to Lucky, Lucky Madaha, who has the TMA Academy in Coventry. If you check out the description box below, you'll have all of his details there with links of how to get in touch with him. Okay? He's one of the... <sighs> Sorry, yeah. martial artists there is yeah so uh, the, uh, tma academy now because uh, pindi's uh, oh okay well we can we'll put all that in there yeah so whatever information look he's going to give me when we yeah. come off this call it'll all be in the uh, description box below and uh yeah okay lucky thanks very much mate thanks for having us yeah, yeah absolute pleasure mate well, thank you yeah. okay